manipulation, pity play by injury or ill health. Pity plays come in many forms. In this video, I explain the nature of them utilised with reference to injury or ill health. Which narcissists utilise these? The greater and the ultra never do. Pity plays are beneath us. Even if we explain the reason why we have not done something as a consequence of being injured, it is offered as an explanation, more likely to use for deflecting accountability by reason of I couldn't attend your white tie ball, my leg was blown off in a fireworks accident. And it's used to avoid accountability, not to elicit sympathy. If it does, it's fuel, but that is not the primary purpose of obtaining it, where the greater or the ultra will utilise it. It is used to assert control by reason of saying, you can't chastise me for failing to turn up to that dinner because there is a good and a very good reason why I was not there. And therefore the greater or ultra will not use pity plays. What about lessers? Well, lower lesser and middle lesser will utilise pity plays indeed, and will do so quite often. Upper lesser B and upper lesser A don't tend to utilise pity plays, certainly with regard to injury or ill health. They invariably think of themselves as robust, impervious, invulnerable. Look at me, I'm 78 years old and as fit as a fiddle. I could climb Mount Kilimanjaro no problem if I wanted to. And then we have the mid-rangers. And here we find the pity play being utilised by the mid-rangers the most. Whether it's lower mid-range, middle mid-range A or B, or upper mid-range, they will all use pity plays in order to elicit sympathy. By using a pity play, it is a manipulation to assert control over you and to draw fuel from you by reason of pity or sympathy. And this is utilised across a whole range of different pity plays, but here it appertains to the use of ill health and or injury. The contradictory nature of the narcissist is such that as a consequence of compartmentalization and the revision of history, the narcissist will see himself as strong, powerful, and impervious to illness or injury, a bastion of invulnerability, a veritable shining example of radiant health and vitality. Such superiority means that the narcissist stands head and shoulders above everyone else, and the weakness that comes with ill health and infirmity is not something that affects them, except when there's a decision that it must. And this is when the relevant narcissists play the sickness card. There are three instances in the main when mid-range and lower lesser and middle lesser narcissists use pity plays. The first is when they actually suffer from some actual illness or injury. It may look just like a fractured eyelash that that lower lesser has suffered, but to him, oh, he has been blinded with a red-hot poker. The pain, good lord, the pain's too great and intense. It racks him and has him twisted up in agony. Come on, empath, he shouts. You must do something. Do something now. Soothe his fevered brow. Splint his broken limbs and bind his wounds. You must drop anything and everything. Forget being at work today. You must call in and excuse yourself, no matter how inconvenient. For you are required to don a nurse's outfit and do your best Florence Nightingale impression for that oh so injured and ever so brave narcissist. This slight snuffle, it's a pneumonia, you know, and to top it all, it's your fault. You insisted on the window of the bedroom being left open again. Now look what you've done. This poor narcissist may not last the week, and you'd like that, wouldn't you? You're so ungrateful after everything that he has done for you. You did it on purpose. You wanted him to be so ill so that you could see him suffer. That's how nasty and selfish you are regarded. Is it any wonder that he's been off with someone else when this is how he's treated by somebody who's supposed to love him? Oh yes, the smallest spot, minor ache and slight cough are all that is needed for those particular narcissists to declare that they are on their deathbeds. It is good for several uses. At first of all, it's utilised to avoid accountability with regard to undertaking household chores or attending an event that you wanted to go to. Secondly, it means that there is the drawing of fuel because you must give the narcissist plenty of attention by looking after them. 
The soothing words and hot water bottles brought to their bedsides all provide them with fuel. Furthermore, there is the provocation by being demanding and castigating you for not living up to expectations. You didn't bring that hot lemon drink soon enough, or those are the wrong pills. You'll be triangulated with others. My mother would do a better job of looking after me than you. All of which, of course, is designed to assert control over you and draw fuel from you. The second instance where the narcissist will play the pity play of injury or ill health with regard to you is when you are ill or injured. After all, the narcissist isn't here to look after you. That would require emotional empathy, a commitment, support. Good Lord, there's none of that. Why should they? That's not their role. They're too busy looking for fuel, and we don't have the time or energy to spend engaged in nursing you. Not only, of course, are we devoid of the concept of feeling that we should care, because we have no emotional empathy, and that we should feel sorry and compassionate for someone who is unwell, we don't regard it as a task that is worthy of someone as brilliant as us. If you moan enough so that we are compelled to call out a doctor, we will pronounce our own diagnosis in order to align ourselves with the brilliance of the medic. When he concludes what ailment it is you are suffering from, we will declare, Yes, I said to her that that was wrong with her, but she wouldn't listen to me, doctor. She insisted on getting you out. I'm sorry she's wasted your time. We get to denigrate you and upset you while showing off how clever we are. Because we knew what was wrong with you, even though we did not, and the doctor records with us. We may as well steal a segment of the doctor's brilliance for our construct while he is here, mightn't we? We will then invite the doctor to examine our shoulder or leg as we go to great lengths explaining how much pain we are in. This keeps the spotlight firmly on us, and the relevant narcissist that utilises pity has moved you getting attention, which wounds the narcissist, to placing it on the narcissist. Therefore, the spotlight is kept firmly on lower, lesser, middle, lesser, or mid-range narcissist, and therefore has you irritated, annoyed, and provoked that the narcissist has hijacked your consultation. Those narcissists will look to declare that they are in a far worse off condition than you. You have a cold, he has flu. It will be used as an opportunity to accuse you of attention-seeking, a nice bit of projection, and we point out how selfish you are for being ill when the narcissist is. The narcissist no interest in tending to you, no sense of accountability, no emotional empathy, and therefore the narcissist needs to make the situation all about him or her. Accordingly, a fake injury or fake illness will be utilised to trump yours. The third reason why the sickness card is played as part of a pity play is to draw fuel and when the narcissist is low on fuel and low on energy, this is a particularly apt one to use. There may be any number of reasons why this state of affairs has arisen. You may be getting wise to some of the narcissist's manipulative behaviour, and therefore you are not reacting as often, so the level and quality of fuel that you provide is reduced. There might also be a natural dip in energy levels for the narcissist, or he or she feels some degree of vulnerability, which means that resources are being stretched rather thin. And this places an additional burden upon the narcissist and makes it difficult to find additional sources of fuel. This diminution in fuel reduces the power of the narcissist and risks the creature that lurks within trying to escape and making itself heard. When this happens, the creature's whisperings remind the narcissist of the weakened self. The narcissist isn't actually ill. The narcissist isn't actually injured. What the narcissist is, is feeling weakened as if they are ill or injured. And of course, with the unaware, lower lesser, middle lesser, or mid-range narcissist, they misunderstand that this weakened state, as a consequence of the reduction in fuel, they believe that it is linked to being ill. Accordingly, the narcissist ends up utilising a sickness card, a pity play, in order to obtain that emergency injection of fuel from you, or whoever else might be to hand. As an empathic individual, you are then programmed to respond to this, and you cannot resist the opportunity to exhibit your empathic trait of caring and your empathic trait of compassion in order to help the narcissist and nurse them. 
The attention that you lavish on the Narcissus provides fuel, and thus the Narcissus begins to feel more powerful again. The creature's catcalls fade, as it is subsumed within the prison of the constructed edifice once again, and the supremacy of the Narcissus returns. The weakness lifts, thanks to the provision of fuel from the empath, and this has been instigated by that particular Narcissist utilising the pity play of sickness or injury. The garnering of sympathy from family and friends, and also from health professionals, adds to all of this. The Narcissist's favourite ailments, of course, are of the invisible variety, depression, a stomach pain or bad back. The Narcissist is a brilliant actor at hamming up the suffering. The portrayal of the poor sick Narcissist would please Ferris Bueller. As with most things, Link to the Narcissist is just another fabrication designed to manipulate, to assert control over you and draw fuel from you. Of course, with all of these Narcissists that use pity plays, lower lesser, middle lesser and the mid-range ones, they are unaware and do not realise that this is the reason they are behaving in this way. Of course, you must never question them. The Narcissist is likely to have researched the symptoms thoroughly and their Munchausen syndrome is most prevalent. You are duty bound to help that pity playing narcissist to rise from their sickbed, and if and if you do not, you are a terrible person, and therefore you will be devalued because you are threatening the narcissist's control. You, of course, will be sick to death of the illnesses and injuries that are manifested by the narcissist, but you are duty bound to deal with them, for if you do not, then consequences will follow for you. I'm H. G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.